We're doing a dead talk. Uh huh. And we're going to bring in someone who can talk to us about chakras. Okay. All right. Are you going to do um, categories? Like, are you going to like draw, you know, male or female? I mean, I would just want to see what shows up. See what shows up. And if we have to, then we will, then we will start to do that. But okay. hope what our intention is to find someone who is knowledgeable that can explain this to us who was once, well, who knows what's going to come up. We'll just let it, let All right. it organically come. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, we, we may, I may need to narrow this down. Um, we okay. have a lot I'm, of, we have a lot of takers. <laughs> it's noisy. Um, you guys see a lot of orbs? Yeah. Can you see them? Oh, yeah. I can't see them. I can't. Yeah. They, they don't show up to here. Okay. Um, okay. And just at least down. narrow it down to male. Let's just do pick, draw the card, name male or female, so okay. I can get rid of half of them. I don't mean to be rude, okay. but male. Too many. Okay. So all the girls go away. Narrow it down to a century or something like. I don't lived, know. lived in the 1900s. Okay. Um, hmm, there we go. I think I have a couple, but let's see what shows up. Okay. Definitely male. Okay. Good. We got male. Um, H. H. J. J. Is that a J? H. J. Um, H. A. R. H. A. R. Definitely. Indian, um, not Native American, mm -hmm. Indian. H A R, help me out here. There's not a lot of reference for me. They're trying, but there's not a lot of reference to this name. Right. H A R ish ish. H A R I S H. I don't, is that first or I don't know. Um, I think that might be a first name. I think the surname is a J. Okay. All right. Ask something, <clears throat> ask something else. Let me see if there's, I'm, I'm struggling with the second name. Um, the first name's right though. Okay. H A R I S H. That's right. What was <clears throat> his profession? Writer, author, um, art, um, like painting, drawing. Uh, um, is it Harish Jahari? Yes. Yes, you have him. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> this is funny. Uh, uh, tell us his birth date. It's definitely May. Um, one nine three four. Yep. May nineteen thirty four. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. This is different. This communication is mildly different than what I'm used to. So. Yeah, he wrote a book, Chakras, Energy Centers of Transformation. Yeah, okay. Okay. Let's start, as we always do, with is, your pre-birth intentions. Is he a, like a musician, too? Is it, There's a lot of music. Is that right? Okay, there's a... Um, all right, I can hear a lot of stuff. Um, um, the intention... Here's the way he's, he's showing me. The intention was to wrap up, wrap up a a very a very long journey. <laughs> oh, Harsha Hari was a successful author, a gifted painter and sculptor, a lifetime scholar, an inspiring teacher, a splendid cook, uh, an Ayurvedic massage miracle a wonderful chanter of mantras and a unique composer of Indian music. 
Okay, that's my, must be what I'm gearing. Yeah. It's not music I know, but um, the um, what's that word you said? Our 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 Veda. Veda. Okay, that yeah. lit something up. Um, our, our Vedic massage. Okay, that lit something up. There's something about with him that there's a connection that Ayurveda and the chakras. There's mm. something that um, for us to talk about there. I think. All right, Harsh. We okay. are we are a group of students interested in learning about chakras from a non-physical perspective, without the influence of fear. Well, let's start then with Ayurvedic. Mm -hmm and how it may be connected to chakras. There's something called, um, he's got something, it starts with a D. Um, it's um, three, yeah. it, it's, it, it intertwines with the chakras and it's, it's important from his perspective. Da, dash, dash? Dash, dashes? Dashes, okay. Something that that's like that's a, sort of the first thing to talk about. Um, so here's what he's saying: the chakras, the chakra system, is it in this density in in three D? There's something else, another energy pattern that sort of governs in a way determines a lot of who we are sort of like i think what he's trying to show me even though there's only three it seems like it's personality types maybe doshas yeah dosha okay there we go there we go okay um there's one that governs how we move, um, create, communicate, um, and this one, if that's dominant sort of in someone, then when that person is balanced in these three areas, there that person is more like energetic and creative um flexible um and an imbalance in that makes someone anxious um um restless so we have so, vata pitta and kapha right Okay, is that right? I, yeah. Uh, um, okay. Whoa. Okay. So these these three doshas, it's dosha, make up what what he's saying. It's like our individuality. Our it's our makeup. Um, we have our own individual sort of makeup and it's it's influenced from his perspective in these doshas the way that we have them and the balance of them they determine like our mental and emotional traits sort of how we react that sort of stuff physiological function like things um okay and those are connected with that determines or it's it's connected to how our chakras really flow those things must be in balance as well as the chakras, it's like what he's telling me is we're we're not going deep enough mm. in a way. Um, I think. Okay. Are, those, are they also associated with colors and frequency? <clears throat> yeah. 
yes. Um, elements, it seems to be more elements. Um, the doshas are more, but yes, right? Yeah, of course, frequency. Um, but earth, fire, water, air, the doshas are um, more closely associated in in that way. Is you see the chakras are as well. Like I'm just starting to learn that there's the earth, water, fire, air. Those first four chakras, um, and the these dosha sort of energy balls, and the way that they're balanced within us. It's again, it's a circle with the chakras, but it's all we are energy and we're far more complex than than we understand we're mm -hmm. keeping it very elementary with the um the seven chakra system is fine he says the seven it's fine that's you know that's fine but okay so Sorry. if you were to create a structured way of learning about all of this energy would you start at the chakras or would you start at the doshas Chakras would be, okay, chakras are easier to understand. They're a bit more, I think the way he's saying this is universal to all of us. They're a bit more the same for each of us. The other part that he's explained to me is is very, in and it's almost like imagine some sort of chemistry or alchemy and how much of this one you have and how much of this one in relationship to this one determines your whole overall constitution of who you are. Like what he's, what he's showing me is that that, that would be perhaps maybe secondary to learn like the next, next level of maybe learning and understanding, even though in some cultures that's more primary um, it's all mixed together. Um, but from from his perspective, that in 3D, the doshas are very, very much earth. They seem to be very earth-based, if I'm understanding what he's showing me. It's elemental, seasonal in a way, like cold weather, hot weather. It, it's all affecting this. So keeping those in balance is perhaps more of an earth Right, more earth where the chakra system takes us all the way, right, all the way up. God, I don't know if I'm making any sense at all. I don't understand half of what I'm saying. Your book about chakras, what did you get wrong or mistaken or misunderstood in that book? Absolutely nothing. Okay, so we could just... <laughs> I think he's playing with us. Well, what I'm saying is we could just read, read that book, <laughs> right? But is there anything okay. in the book that that from his perspective now is okay so to to read that book to understand that book still is so basic it's very elementary very simplified there's so much more going on but not all of it most of it unnecessary to truly understand from a 3d perspective to to be interested, oh, this is cool. To be interested, to have your curiosity sparked, to research, to go inside, to learn to feel along that pathway of dosha and chakra and magic in general is he's, that's the word he's using um this is enough everything written should be read and absorbed as a guideline as a springboard to go deeper inside of yourself. I 
think that's what is being said. Okay. Was he able to get all of his chakras balanced? Were they always balanced? Was he able to learn this early on? Um, and how did that affect his life? Never, not one time, all balanced. Okay. Never, ever, 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 ever. It is a practice. It's a journey. And should not be undertaken for an outcome mm. should be undertaken for the pleasure of the practice we're starting to comprehend that it's sort of a chicken and the egg thing the chakras are blocked because of this event or this experience and they're opened through awareness of certain experiences or processing limiting beliefs um does the chakra get blocked as a result of an event or an experience, or is the experience a result of a blocked chakra? How does that work? An experience, a perception of an experience can disrupt the energy flow, cause an imbalance or a block. An imbalance or a block will cause a skewed, he's saying, I think skewed, a, a skew perception of an experience. Oh, I see it. Did that make sense? Yeah. I don't know what we just said, but yeah. okay. What is the best way to find out our doshas? There are simple things that must be, I think you like personality testing in Ooh. a sense that oh, can cool. lead you, guide you to perhaps what one of the three you feel or find you are more heavily weighted in. What are naughties? Naughties are can you explain it or just show me just showing me um it's like there are lines they're like meridian lines or connections in energy in our energy field is that right <laughs> this is what he's showing me it's what it looks like well how do they affect everything as we learn where we are now to balance chakras the nadis he's saying are a bit more associated with um i got this right like acupressure points sort of like acupressure points i think uh. he's saying more like points and the nadis are these listen a lot of this is visual so sort of connectors there um so certainly there are things to things to open, things to learn. Chinese Chinese medicine of acupuncture and acupressure, these things, it's all about focusing and moving and releasing energy. I think the nadis, this thing that you're asking is, it seems like they're very closely related to what I would think of as meridians in Chinese medicine, what these connective points. Is the use of light language in conjunction with chakra flow beneficial? And would he have used that if he had, if you, if that was available to him at the time? Light language was available to him. And is that what part and of chant, chanting might have been? Words of power, chanting, light language, very much. Um, and... Yes, because it's vibration, it's energy. It is, it's like he's saying, it's life force. The energy flow of the chakras, the flow of the light language, whether it is done in hand, spoken in, right, in sound, singing, painted, drawn, 
it is it is moving energy it's vibration light sound on each end of that spectrum sound is just audible light right was this wrapping up of a long journey the utilization of all these things in the perfect place perfect time uh probably channeling it yourself bringing in all this of of all this energy in massage and art and music and you know all these things was this like a full expression of the most energetic version of your origin consciousness in a human life this was the wrapping up of that the words that you just said were given to you by him. It was the <laughs> fullest expression. He just yeah. said, I just, he's, I've got this visual and I don't know, we'll have to see, but um, he's, he's very jolly and jovial and his face is very intense. I don't know how obvious this is. We, we can't, we're, we're thinking now that of course earth has chakras as well. Could you tell us where she does. they are? He says yeah. she, she, she does. Yeah, he calls her she. Um, she does. And could you tell us where they are? He's saying, um, like, check out the Nile River. Well, I thought that the... <laughs> I don't know. That, that was my idea, was that the chakra system was along the Nile River. But some were saying that like Mount Shasta and Lake Titicana are. are... I think he's, I think in some way, maybe, maybe it's because that's what you thought. I don't know that that's why maybe he's playing. I actually don't know if this is a serious answer and he's not really saying that it is or it isn't. Um, There's, there is something that he's sort of overlaying and it's more, again, more of an impression in that um, remember that space and time are two sides of the same coin. I clearly understand this. And that to experience time in the way that we do it's a bit of a like we're we're listening to the warped part of a record. Right. And this is the way he's explaining it. And in many ways, to experience space is is the same. It's a a, a warped version yeah. of of a very distinct dimensional reality right and to be in this side or in this side is to be in the I, listen i don't know just to go with what he's sort of laying on me here so to pinpoint the location of a chakra on a planet or a human right. is inaccurate at best that it's it is it just in, inaccurate at best as individuals as humanity we are earth we're the same i got this already i know that we are earth we aren't on earth we aren't a part of earth in that way we we are it to have fun if finding, locating, connecting to the chakras of the earth is of interest, to read what is out there, what has been said, to get your own information and follow that, to make a connection with your own, the way you perceive your own chakras, and then move through space and time to a location, to what you are led to, to connect with your own heart chakra, with the heart chakra of the earth, right? 
could be a fun game and would be different for every single person. Uh, someone had a fun question here. Um, is there a famous person we know that has had, oh, this is Katie, uh, famous person that has had, um, well, so this is a question about, has there been a famous person who's had all their chakras balanced, but we realize that's impossible. That brings up. Um, he said, we're not going to say impossible, but not like, that. <laughs> okay. all right. Uh, has there is a famous person out there who's who's exemplified with a balanced chak chakra? Maybe an example of someone who has a balanced chakra. One balanced chakra. A balanced system of seven chakras in balance. I don't know. Not famous in Western society. Okay. <laughs> I wish you guys could see the, some of the stuff that I'm getting. It's funny. I'm I'm interpreting it the best way I can. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> what's the dominant dasha of the chakra teacher? Or was he so-called tridashic? The teacher typically would be okay there's is there one that starts with a k did anyone know Kappa. 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 okay um many teachers are weighted in the that dosha that i think what he's trying to show me is like um stable very stable and nurturing sort of like motherly almost um i think that's what i'm seeing um from his perspective now what okay what he's saying is that just like the chakras move and and you you change all the time this dosha energy also at different points in in his life one perhaps is more dominant than another even though at i think what he's saying is when he was teaching it it was definitely typed you were this type, this type, or this type. Um, from his perspective now, he's saying he would back up off of that just a bit. Mm -hmm. At any particular point in your life, you may find, so like the tri doshik that you're talking about, what he's showing me, and it almost reminds me of like a TV logo or something. So imagine the three balls on a triangle and they sort of intersect, but they're, you know, moving and one can right be dominant, one can come out that they move. Like one, one seems to be more um like somebody that's really determined and quick, right? They're quick witted, right? Uh, alert and driven or determined, right? Like Lily. Which, right, which one is that? What dosha is that one? If anyone knows, they could type it as well. Search the P, I think. Pita. Like the bread? Well, it's P-I-T-T-A, so I don't oh, know how to pronounce it. Oh, this is the P. Okay. I'm okay. only getting like yeah. the first letter. Um, okay. Pitta. Okay. Pitta. Yeah. Pitta. Okay. Pitta. Mm -hmm. It's almost like there's a T-H, but there's, it's not. I mean, it, it sounds like Pitta. Sounds like a TH, like an English TH, but is that um, dominant in me? At times. That's so that's I think, and it feels like this is a contradiction in what he taught in life and what from the perspective now he's he sees it saying as, to me. As changing, ever changing. Evolving. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Not that they, and it's a, it's a way for us where we are to understand energy, to understand movement, to understand and use what we know as a guide to understand that if, if we're feeling anxious or restless, or, you know, we've got something physical going on that we can refer to this guide of doshas and use similar techniques to hone, balance, expand, right? That particular energy. I'm going to have to learn about this. I feel yes. like a dummy. Are the chakras and the doshas influenced by astrological movement? Yes. That was simple. <laughs> are they influenced? Okay. Are they influenced by anything that we're not aware of or that people who study these things are in where? Is there something about this whole system that humans don't understand yet? Most of it. Is there some little hmm. okay? Is, is there something uh that we could add to it right now? What we don't factor in. Oh, I hope I have this right. Mm -hmm. Is collective consciousness. The collective. The influence that the collective, the collective of humanity, the collective of all beings on this planet, the collective of all beings in our solar system, the collective of all beings in our galaxy, the collective of all everything is influencing what is happening energetically in every moment. And we feel so separate and so individual that our scientists, philosophers, spiritual leaders, teachers even discount that do not understand and that has great impact that is one he's Excellent. going to give us that's, one thing <laughs> that's a great one had you Oof. have you had a life in another reality where you were part of a collective consciousness of course yes and was it and easier now. to understand the chakra system from that collective perspective not easier what we do oh okay we see if i get this right because it sounds really cool i think if i get this right is is in the mind in different densities in within consciousness where the collective is is far more aware the connection isn't as as like your vibration that you're you asking the questions <clears throat> and and i think those on the call imagine the collective consciousness as a peer connected in mind this is not really accurate the connection is here it is everything is exchanged in in feeling um and to function in that way there's a feeling of the chakra system there's a feeling of the light body the energetic there's a feeling of these things a knowing a sentience of it that our separation and, and our heaviness to focus with the mind and believe that the mind is correct. The mind is dominant. The mind is what we should lead with. The mind is what we lead with. We also then compose that onto other beings that we believe are of greater intelligence, higher intelligence, and we put more mind on that. Right, we say they're more more here, but they are far less here, far more 
here. What's the feeling intensity on earth compared to that collective consciousness and that reality, that feeling mm -hmm. there? In that sense, the feeling reality is referring to emotion, that energy motion that is communication. It is a feeling reality. The feelings are a direct result of a perspective. Okay. Far more intense when speaking of functioning and communicating through a heart center and sentience through a heart center, it is not the emotion that's being, that he's speaking of. It's not emotion. Right. That's different. Yeah. Feeling reality as Joshua is speaking of it, he's saying is, is, different than what he's speaking of when he talks of sentience through the heart. Imagine living on earth with this ability to feel through the heart. My understanding is that, that would be a very powerful feeling, a lively feeling, a vibrant feeling compared to other realities where it's a collective consciousness. There's something more about feeling in general in this reality, like the, those feelings could be brought online and would have, would, would, uh, would just be brighter and sharper and more intense. The range of feeling is, is what brings on the intensity. It's like the range of music to the contrast is what makes it intense. <clears throat> that same contrast does not exist in certain other mm -hmm. physical reality. Okay, I think I understand. Do you guys understand that? I think I do, I don't know. Well, I just caught something there that emotion really is energy in motion. Mm -hmm. Is that how he would explain it? Mm -hmm. And of all the places to choose the wrapping up, why was Earth chosen for that? What we were just talking about for the intensity, the feeling, right? The feeling of it, the celebration of it. It is, it is, it's a, from that perspective, from a non physical perspective, this is the flaming birthday cake of existence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this was the culmination of a long journey. What is next for you? Would there be no more physical lives or the start of a brand new journey? The wrapping up of a long journey is in no way an indication of an end. <laughs> just, wow just from your perspective there's been a, a long journey and this the wrapping up could be lots of other lifetimes i had no idea it was getting ready to come out there that was really but, cool yeah but i'm just talking physical lives you could exist as a teacher a nebulous mist <laughs> as a nebulous mist <laughs> great well this has been wonderful thank you so much for joining us and enlightening us like did that. It's really cool. They've never had one of them do that before. Wow.